The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com, where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. And we're actually going to probe the structure and the stereochemistry of amino acids. Now, with the excep exception of glycine, which is the simplest amino acid, all alpha amino acids are chiral. Okay, so with the exception of glycine, um, all alpha amino acids are chiral. So there's actually a bit of a typographical error here. I'm just going to clear that up for you by deleting that. And there we go. So with the exception of glycine, all alpha amino acids are chiral, or they exhibit chirality. Now, before we move ahead, you have to understand a few important concepts in relation to stereochemistry. You need to know what a stereoisomer is, you need to know what a chiral center is, and you also need to know what an enantiomer is. So, a stereoisomer is basically a pair of isomers that have the exact same connectivity of atoms, okay? So they have the same connectivity of atoms, but they have a different spatial arrangement of atoms in space. They have a different uh, spatial arrangement of atoms in space, in three-dimensional space. So that's pretty much what we refer to as a stereoisomer. So essentially, all the atoms in a stereoisomer or in stereoisomers are linked together or connected in the same way, but they have a different arrangement of those atoms or those groups in three-dimensional space. And that's pretty much what we refer to as a stereoisomer. Okay, remember, this is just a review. If any of this sounds like Greek or foreign language, you might want to go back and review a few important stereochemical concepts in the organic chemistry lectures. Now, as far as chirality is concerned, um, a chiral molecule is basically one that has what we call a non-superposable a non-superimposable mirror image. I'm not even sure if superposable is an actual word, but hey, we're not here to study English. So um, a chiral molecule is basically one that is a non-superposable mirror image. Okay, so if this sounds like Greek to you again, this should be stuff that you're pretty comfortable with at this point in time. If you're not, you might want to go back again and review that uh, lecture on stereochemistry. So a chiral center is basically one, or a chiral molecule is one that is a non-superposable mirror image. And what we mean by that is that if you took that molecule and you drew what was its exact mirror image, that mirror image would not be superposable or would not be superimposable over the original molecule with which you started. Now, that's most accurately depicted using diagrams. Like I said, go back to that lecture if you do not know what I'm talking about. Now, what I want to mention also in this case is chiral centers basically usually are asymmetric molecules. Or in the case of uh, amino acids, in this case, we'll be talking about asymmetric carbons. So what is an asymmetric carbon? It's basically a carbon that is bonded to four different groups. And that's what we refer to as a chiral center or as a stereogenic center. So to illustrate this point, I'm going to direct your attention to uh, the two amino acids we have at the bottom of the screen right here. So in this case, our chiral center would be this carbon right here. And as you can see, it is bonded to uh, four different groups. So I'm just going to highlight them. So that's going to be the first one right there. This is going to be another group right here. This is going to be another group right here, and the last one actually not depicted in this form of or in this structural representation of valine is our proton, our hydrogen. There's a hydrogen atom right there, okay, attached to that carbon. So in this case, we have one, two, three, and four groups that are attached to that centrally located. Uh, chiral carbon. Now all these groups are different from each other and for that reason we call that a chiral center and this is a chiral molecule. Now direct your attention to the left hand side of the screen where we have uh, glycine. Now we said with the exception of glycine all alpha amino acids are chiral. So 
what is it with glycine that makes it not chiral? And again, I'll direct your attention to the alpha carbon, the carbon in the alpha position, which is that carbon right there. As you can see, it's bonded to one group right there, two groups right there, and it is also bonded to two hydrogens that are not included in this representation, but are there nonetheless. And because of the simple fact that it has two groups that are identical or that are not different from one another, glycine is not a chiral molecule. And that's pretty much it. Now, enantiomers are basically um, non-superposable mirror images of each other. So if you took a chiral molecule and got its mirror image, those two would be what we refer to as enantiomers. So that's pretty much a bit of a recap, jog your memory a little, get you eased into what we're gonna be talking about. And uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna move on. And I'll direct your attention to the second statement on the screen that actually says that the chiral center in an alpha amino acid is at the alpha carbon atom. Now this is something that we have already established. So the alpha position is right there for that glycine and the alpha position will be right there for valence. So that alpha position right there, that alpha carbon is what we refer to as the chiral center. Now, almost all naturally occurring amino acids have what we call the S uh, configuration. That's actually a typo right there. I'm just gonna clear that up. Moving that up right there. Have the S configuration at the alpha carbon. Now, I don't want you to really worry about the statement right now. We are going to uh, review a few of these naming conventions, including the R and S naming convention, which is based on uh, Can, Ingold, and Prelog priority rules. But before we get there, I really don't want you to worry about that, that too much. So that's pretty much pretty much a bit of a lowdown on a few of the general things you need to understand as far as amino acids are concerned. And uh, what we're gonna do is we'll move on.